During this segment of our course on gearboxes, we will acquaint you with a few of the basic procedures you should know with regard to the repair and replacement of parts. The procedures we show you will be very generalized and can be applied to nearly any gearbox you may encounter. First, be sure the gearbox has been completely disassembled. If any further disassembly is required, complete it at this time. It's generally considered good practice to order new gaskets, bearings, and other parts which are normally replaced as a matter of course. Check with your supervisor to find out what the procedures are at your plant with regard to replacing parts. The next step is to clean all parts of the gearbox thoroughly using the cleaning method prescribed by your plant. This could range from the use of Varsol, as shown here, to bead blasting or steam cleaning. Inspect the oil tubing and piping very carefully to ensure that they are clean and in good condition. Be especially watchful when checking the spray nozzles, as shown here. A gearbox without lubricating oil won't last long. The oil lines should be blown out with compressed air to remove any residue that may plug the lines. Clean all gasket surfaces of the gearbox parts thoroughly, as the workman is doing here on the bearing cartridge. Once the gasket surfaces are clean, inspect them closely for nicks, cuts, or other damage. Inspect all of the parts very carefully taking notice of even the smallest details, such as these oil holes. By inspection, we do not mean just a cursory glance. Take some time to be sure. It could save you time later. Damage, such as that being pointed out on this lock nut, could escape unnoticed unless all parts are carefully checked. The teeth of the gears are very important. Watch closely for signs of pitting, wear, or corrosion, and learn to recognize each type of wear or damage and the reason for it. Since these gears are in satisfactory condition, we will use graphic illustrations to show you what to watch for. Destructive pitting, like this, may be caused by overload or poor lubrication. These gear teeth are scored another result of improper or insufficient lubrication for the loading conditions under which the gears must operate. It could also be a result of blocked oil spray nozzles. This example shows a gear which was loaded too heavily to maintain an oil film. The result is called galling or plastic yielding. This gear has been subjected to abrasive particles in the lubricant, causing the wear you see. This illustration is self-explanatory. Overload can break the gear teeth. It's as simple as that. As you have seen, there are numerous reasons for wear and damage to gears. You should learn to recognize all of them, be able to diagnose the cause, and how to correct it. On-the-job experience will be the most important factor in learning to recognize, diagnose, and correct problems of wear and damage to gears. There is no substitute for seeing and personally examining damage to a gear. Another very important step in examining the parts is to install both the high and low speed shafts between centers in a lathe and check the shaft centers for runout. This may be done by positioning a dial indicator at the end of the shaft as shown here. A reading other than zero runout at this point on the shaft would indicate the need to draw the shaft center to the true center by re-machining. After you have determined that both centers are on center, move the dial indicator and check the shaft for straight. Be sure that you check all of the bearings and gear fits on each of the shafts. No runout is allowable on these critical fits. When your checks for straight are complete, install a dog on the shaft. Don't forget to protect the shaft from damage by inserting a piece of copper between the dog set screw and the shaft. The next step is to polish the shaft very lightly. This will expose any damage or faults that may have escaped your attention during earlier checks. The bearing fits should also be polished very lightly. 
However, you must be extremely careful not to remove any metal which could change the tolerances and ruin the fit between the shaft and its bearings. After polishing the bearing fits, mic them and compare your measurements to the manufacturer's specifications. If there is any question about any of your measurements, ask your supervisor for instructions. He'll be glad to help. When you have completed the first shaft, repeat the procedure for the other one. Most plants recommend that new bearings be installed regardless of the condition of the old bearings which were removed from the gearbox. Consult your supervisor to find out what the policy is at your plant. Don't forget to inspect the oil seals, regardless of the type. The workman is pointing to the built-in labyrinth in the high-speed outer bearing retainer. Another very important part of this particular gearbox is the oil pump. Look it over carefully, since this pump is supplying the lifeblood of the gearbox. If it's worn, replace it. Don't forget to inspect the oil cooler, if your gearbox is equipped with one. Check it for leaks, damage, or plug tubes. Normally, the bearing spacers will not be worn or damaged. However, they could possibly be damaged during disassembly. If they are, repair or replace them. Mic all bearing fits in the cartridges and compare your measurements to the specifications set forth by the manufacturer. Those are a few of the procedures which are common to the repair of most gearboxes, regardless of their types. Needless to say, there will be variations, additions, and deletions from the procedures we have shown you due to different pieces of equipment and varying practices established at each individual plant. For this reason, it is always best to consult your supervisor if you have any question with regard to the disassembly and repair of any gearbox. In our next segment, we'll cover the reassembly of this gearbox. But first, we have some questions for you in Exercise 7 of your workbook.